can you explain the difference between awakening, realization, um, and liberation? <laughs> oh, that's a big question. Hmm. Well, I think I think that I would I would put awakening and, and realization in the same category, and I described awakening a little while ago as being the the true realization of it's really you don't wake up consciousness wakes up within you and how the you steps aside so that's that's a, a sudden realization of consciousness as being alive everything everyone all of that um, so I would call self the realization of the self the same thing because I sing the self, again, Ramana Maharshi has said that the self, he uses the self as a term a lot, uh, is consciousness. Uh, so it's that which wakes up. I think that for myself, I've kind of separated liberation as being a more stable state of living congruently from that place, that there's really no personal design or interests left anymore and you're just living from that giving um, or I don't know if it's always giving sometimes it's more internal but uh, there's a there's a sense that nobody's here but uh, awareness is here awareing awareing is happening. eating is happening moving is happening but there's really nobody doing it and it's more stable that way. Uh, and I think it's rare for that to be a stable uh, condition. Uh, I think most people uh, flow in and out of uh, being, uh, leaning into life as a, well, and then there's also a return. It's also a return into ordinary living. That's true, too. It's uh, a willingness to be in a human laugh like a human, dance like a human, play like a human, do the work that needs to be done in the house or whatever, without resistance. So it's, it's like the freedom to be, be doing human stuff in that flow and the freedom to fall into the more expanded realizations and expressions that are, that are available to you. It's like the psyche has this fluidity. You can go in either direction. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to go to a movie. I'm going to go call a friend and go out to lunch. And I'm going to sit. I'm going to spend the next three days sitting in silence. And it's there's no resistance and there's no attachment. There's no desire to grab things to be a certain way. And there's a sense of... It doesn't mean you never have any pain or you never have any problems. And I, I've, you know, I'd say that the most liberated person I've ever known is Ajashanti, and I know him quite well. And and, and had some medical issues that most of us would be very unhappy about. And uh, so he addresses those when they arise, but he's also deeply at peace about. It. He's not making a story of it. There's nobody there making it a problem. It's just. Um, you know, if you have a lot of pain, you need to find a way to alleviate it. Um, and then um, Bob Haridas was a beautiful being to at Madonna Center. He's just recently passed away. Bob Haridas was uh, the guru in Ram Dass's book, Be Here Now, the guru who always wrote on a chart. He was silent. He never spoke. And he was brought to California. Uh, many years ago by a group of students and they set up a beautiful ashram in California um, called Mount Madonna Center and uh, he was the heart of it really but but his students really became very strong yogis and he he was just amazing I mean he was really a guru a classical guru but um, and he had tremendous insight but um, he loved babies if you, you know, brought a child to him, the child would crawl up in his lap and he'd just light up. Yeah. And he loved creating, having his students create all these wonderful 
icons around the uh, property where they live. So there's a wonderful Hindu temple, a small one, uh, to Hanuman. The, and there's, a, you know, it's... So he lived with, in both worlds. But he was clearly very... Uh, not really of this world, but very much willing to be present in it. I, I think that's liberation. And, you know, that's just my opinion. Someone else may have another perspective. 